Okay, I am now in Ubuntu 10.10. This is a 32-bit installation. And the difference between Ubuntu 10.10 and SUSE 10.3 is that you can actually run both versions of Firefox, as 3 and 4, at the same time. And when you go into Firefox 4 and you go to Help and About, it tells you exactly what version you're running. So. I am going to go ahead, open up Firefox 4, and I'm going to go to help and about. And they're calling it Minefield, which basically means it's it's a beta. I'm trying to make that clear that it is a beta. This is 4.0 B12 pre. This was compiled uh, three days ago, uh, March 3rd, 2011. Today is March 6th, 2011. Okay, so how do I even get Firefox 4 installed here in Ubuntu 10.10? Well, there's a very good guide. And I am going to hopefully be able to find again. I think I used this one last night. And of all this writing here, all I really had to do was go ahead and go to this page which is the digitalizer.com 2010 9.4 install Firefox for Ubuntu and what I did is I highlighted this right click copied went to the command line oh god the command line and even though I'm logged in as root right now I was as a user and I just went edit and paste I'm not going to do that now press enter a bunch of stuff scroll off the screen doesn't really matter then when that was all done, I just highlight sudo uh, uh, apt-get uh, install Firefox 4, copied it, paste that, pasted that, did it, paste, oh, <laughs> well, <laughs> had I not had it installed, and it installs it as the binary Firefox-4 to differentiate between it and Firefox 3, and they could both be run at the same time, or differently, or different times, whatever. I think they could both be run at the same time. I'm not going to try it, it's not worth not, not within the scope. Anyway, um, okay, so where I, where I left off last night is I couldn't get the demo that I just showed you in SUSE, OpenSUSE 11.3 to work here in Ubuntu. And uh, all, another thing, uh, again, the prerequisites, at least on my other system, is one, I had the proprietary drivers installed. And I can't say I'm sure that that is a prerequisite, but I can say that's the condition that my other system is in. I do know last night that I did end up installing, um, I think the latest version of the ATI, ATI drivers for Linux, it's 11.1. It's, it's three versions better than the one I have installed on the 64-bit version of SUSE. But to get that installed on the 64-bit version of SUSE was a bit painful and a little scary. And I had to go over to the SUSE Lizards website, and although a lot of the documentation was good, there were a couple of things in there that could have been pitfalls, but eventually... If had I not had that web page, it wouldn't have worked out for me at all. But I digress. Okay, so the question is, how am I going to get this to work in, in Ubuntu 10.10? When I go to the Ubuntu Software Center, or should I? No, I should go back and I should explain how I got the ATI drivers installed. It is not a painful experience in Ubuntu 10.10. It's not a very scary experience at all. There's a very good page for that. Um, 10.10. Was this? There was. Here it was. I used this community Ubuntu documentation. I do notice sometimes when I'm in Firefox 4, I'll click on a link and it won't respond. i got to do it again. Okay, so here I am. This is the page, the actual page that I used. This was on March 5th, 2011. It's probably going to work 
We're on March 6th. Okay. It seems like there's an awful, there's an awful lot of different... Um, it's a little confused, but with my experience, I was able to use it to, to, you know, to make sense of it. Basically, it is a good idea that, you know, that you would go to this web page and see whether the graphics driver you want to use is actually supported in Linux by AMD. Chances are it is very great that they will. Um, on mine, I had to desktop graphics, and then I think I had... Hmm... Yeah, good question is how would I even know what version of, um, okay, let's go back. So before you could do that, though, before you could even go and check to see whether you have compatibility, you have to know what card version you have. The way to find that out is to, type, is to use the command they have on the page down in the middle, fglfrxinfo, voila. I have an HT an ATI Radeon 4550. Okay, so now let's go and see what they support. Okay, so desktop graphics. I have an HD series, and my is in the 4000, and I have Linux. This happens. I happen to be on the whole environment is a 32-bit environment, so. In this case, even though I do have a 64-bit processor, I'm going to pick the 32-bit software because the whole environment is 32-bit. At least I think that's the safest thing to do. Now, some might come by and tell me I'm wrong, and that's okay. I'd be appreciated. But as far as I know, <laughs> it's probably the safest way to go. Then display the results. So yes, we support that, and here's your download. And yes, you go ahead and click on the download. And let's get back to this other web page. Ta -da. Okay, so step one should be to do this thing in the bottom. Then you can find out what it is, what card you have. Once you know what card you have, check your compatibility. Then we're going to start going into the you know, the step by step. Okay, to begin, click on this. That's the whole routine I went through. Go through the routine, download the driver. In fact, it's kind of backwards. They're making you go there twice. <laughs> what I would do is do the FGLX info first, then I would go to this page, fill out this form, and because they say, here's the driver to download, that implies that they do support it, so go ahead and download the damn thing. Okay, move on to the next step. Don't worry about the release notes. I skipped all this garbage here. All I did, and also, I don't choose to download my binaries to desktop or downloads. I've already changed out my preferences. Why? Because everything you do from the command line is from your home directory. When you open this up, it doesn't start at desktop. It starts in your home directory. So why anybody would want to download something just to make you do an additional steps beyond me? You can if you want. But I like to put things in my home directory. To me, that's the folder. That is the document folder. Nothing else. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> it's not that serious. <laughs> anyway, okay. So, there it is. Okay, I'm, I'm saving it, you know, to, just to make sure this thing saves where you can find it. Sometimes it's... If you don't know, or put it this way, if you don't know, if you downloaded the binary, you just can't find that thing. To find out where, you where it ended up landing, go to edit preferences and then in the general section here you'll see down here it'll say save files to and it'll tell you where it was saved to you know so and you can change that if you want better way to put it than what I just did okay then 
then I'll just do then what I did is I just did app get update the sudo app get update after I opened up the command prompt which, which is like applications etc ex accessories not etc and then terminal bam there it is okay now you don't need to worry about <coughs> changing directories so long as <coughs> you have downloaded um, your software to your home directory. If you download it to, to desktop, then from here, because right here, this says where where am I at? Well, this is the user. This little squiggly line here means I'm in my home directory. If I change it to download, say, first that in caps, it makes it. The squiggly is still there, but then it has downloads. That means I'm in the downloads directory. Okay. Okay. What they're doing here is they're having you type ls just so you can see that they're actually there before you start the routine. You know, they just want you to know that you've that you're in the directory of where these things landed. In my case, that's my home directory. In your case, so when you type ls, you know. <laughs> There's a Sun Java deb that, that I happen to have there, but um, you know they, what they want you to be able to see is are is that ATI binary that, that you that you downloaded. So this is an error here where it says you and you should see blah 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 blah. All you really should see is from the ATI driver installer eleven two. That part. That's all you should see in your directory, not the HTTP, W2, ATI, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Then they want you to do an app get update just to make sure that everything's in sync with the repositories and what's about ready to happen. So, um, again, easy way to do that. There's no one actually demonstrate it. Right here, edit, paste. So, there we go. And they want the password. And all app get update means is just get a list of all the apps that are on repositories out there on servers that are available to me and make sure I got the latest list so I don't ask for something that it actually isn't there. Okay, so you got that. It's all updated. I'm going to CD out of the downloads directory. Back in my home directory. Then I did this. I did do the QT GUI. Now I already had this because I think I might even have KDE 4 somewhere on here or an attempt KDE 3. That's installed. If I didn't have it installed it would just start downloading stuff and eventually everything would be okay. Okay. Then this I had never done before but basically you're going to be making little Debian packages out of the thing you installed. So I just copied this again, edit, and then paste. Hopefully it won't start doing it. Good, because I've already done all that. And what will end up is you'll end up having four little dev files that pop up for you. Okay. And it says, you know, if you have you know, if you have a 32-bit version, the names are going to be a little different. It's not going to have the AMD64, but instead it's going to have i386 on there. It's all, it's all that, that same. Then, just run this. Now, the only difference is between what I'm saying here, if you have other dev packages sitting around in your own directory from before when you've downloaded them for whatever reason, most time in Ubuntu you don't really have to do that. If you happen to have it there, then you do this command, sudo d package minus i star dot deb, that means, what that means is install every deb package that's in that directory. You may not want to do that. <laughs> Don't know. Maybe a package you downloaded ended up in uninstalling later and, um, well, uh, this is going to reinstall. So make sure that, you know, you look in your home directory, which is basically, you know, places, home folder. The, the kind of you you know you can sort it by the type is it you know Debian D package see if I got any yeah 
here we go, software package, right? Dropbox. So if I were to run <laughs> that command, it would also install Dropbox, which I already have installed. Which, by the way, works, works very nicely in Linux. Comes up every time you log in if you install Dropbox from Dropbox.com. But I digress. Okay, so uh, I'm not going to mess with it because I get a little uneasy when I mess with uh, it. It works. I've already done it last night. I'm like, don't want to do it again. I just don't want any chance to mess up my X is a pain of the butt. To, I mean, if something is messed up, forget it. So yeah, you are taking, I'm going to point that out, you are taking a risk by installing the proprietary drivers that when you reboot, you may, you may just get a black screen. So keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Be ready to deal with it. You may want to search the Ubuntu forums for people that have your model computer, your model card, just to see whether there are people out there asking for help or saying that after they rebooted in your version of Ubuntu or one close that they got a black screen. It's a whole different ball of wax, a whole different set of procedures to get out of that situation. But, <laughs> Let's assume you're going to be okay and you're confident you're going to be okay. And then at that point, in a directory where only these four Debian packages that you just created are resting, you take this sudoD package and you paste that sucker in there. Press enter, give password, then it will install. That's not the end of it. You've installed the drivers. Let's just read the rest of this. I did this ATI config and it didn't really seem to respond or it actually seemed to give me some errors. Okay. Copy, paste, put it in there. In fact, that's really not, well. Yes. This is the same error that I got last night. Unable to find any supported screen sections. I don't know what that means. Um, I don't know if it matters. I don't know if that's the reason why WebGL is not, as of now, even as of now, and I haven't done the steps yet, is not configured <coughs> in my Ubuntu there. Okay. Then the last thing I did was, again, the FGLRX info. Edit, paste. Basically, you know, when the guy says, if you see anything about Mesa in there, the drivers didn't install properly. That's it. Okay, so now you have the latest video driver, which is a risk to take. And by the way, if you have that latest video, proprietary video driver installed, you're now also should be able to use CompU's Fusion without any problem. And I'll quickly show, <laughs> show you that. Why not? Uh, and right click on the desktop, change desktop background, go to visual effects, and you go with the extras. You can click close, and now I'm not sure exactly how to make it do wobbly windows or explosions or burning fires to close your windows. That I'm not going to show you, but that's how you enable CompUse in Ubuntu. If it doesn't work that way, don't go any further, you're going to probably end up with a black screen. Unless, of course, you don't have the, the proprietary video drivers in there. If you do and that doesn't work, don't mess with it. Leave it alone. At least in my experience. Okay. So you have the video drivers. Now you need to get Firefox 4. And actually, I already covered that, didn't I? Now, the problem I have, and where I'm stuck right now, is do I actually have Mesa installed in this thing? And if I do, how do I find it? Well... I got the idea that maybe uh, this package called Mesa Utils is what I needed, and it was already installed. And then what I did is I went into user library, and I ran ls.l, but I said only show me the the files that have the word Mesa in it. That's what this pipe gref means. This right here. The output were two lines. One is this libglso, and then a folder called Mesa. Uh, now, just to visually see that, now 
is in the user library directory. It should be a folder, I guess, called Mesa. Maybe why I couldn't find it. Now, notice it doesn't look the same as, as it doesn't have the same name as the one in, in SUSE. The one in SUSE was Lib Open Mesa with, you know, 0.7, point whatever. This I have LibGL SO 1.2. I don't know, but at least I know where it's located. User Lib Mesa LibGL SO 2. I'm going to copy the name of this. Properties why okay I guess we'll do the rename thing can't do that why and I cannot even I I like copying things okay L I B G L S O one point two I guess maybe I can just keep that open okay so where is my Firefox now there we go. So now I want to go to about config. And the first time you do that, it'll give you a warning that this could violate the warranty. Are you sure? I unchecked the box and I said, yeah, I'm sure. Okay, next thing I did, so that's why it didn't show up again. And then I go WebGL. Only the WebGL stuff shows up. Now this native. I'm going to reset that to whatever it was. And this is right here. Should be user library Mesa. Don't spell it right. I'm screwed, right? User live Mesa. And then I want L I B capital B capital L capital L dot S O dot one point two now. If this works, and if I'm right, then I'll be able to see the demo. If I'm wrong, the demo won't work, and I don't have an answer for you. I, my, the question I have is how do I get this, that same Mesa package to run in, um, in Ubuntu? Now, I could mess around with it. I can go to uh, back into SUSE. I can install the 32-bit version, copy that file over, and plonk it into the user live directory and link it and it'll probably work uh, but you know shouldn't be that way right <laughs> right okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close this just restart and restart Firefox and I'm not holding my breath I'll, I'll just tell you that right now I am I'm absolutely uncertain I have no degree of certainty. In fact, I, I'm, I'm almost more certain this is not going to work. I think I tried this last night. I also noticed here in Ubuntu, for some reason, I don't, maybe it's the 32-bit, it just seems to be a little bit less responsive. Web Wonder, search for, then I go over here. And let's see if I can experience this thing now. That's... That's a little more promising. That is a little more promising. But you can see I... I'm not getting as much, I don't know. Try it. I'm not saying it's the most reliable thing in the world, but um, I don't know. I'm just wondering whether because I have those open or because I have two versions, <laughs> two instances. Oh, that was 
Was that Firefox 3? May have been. Also, paste doesn't work. <laughs> when you go into Firefox 4. Let's try this one more time. Web. Oh, wonder. Now, I also have to ask myself, did I go in the right version of Firefox 4 and do the right about config? Also, I have to ask myself, do these share the same configurations? I think they do. Well, let's, let's take a look. WebGL. Okay, so it's configured right. It's been restarted. Let's try Web of Wonder. I have a little more confidence. A little bit of a less of a lack of confidence. Let's see what happens now. There it is. Okay, so it says no WebGL context is found. It says to click, the, click there for details, but there are absolutely really none to really go by. Um, that's it. It just says you need to have P buffers and OpenGL drivers available. Well, I am absolutely boggled as to what I need to do now. Because when you go here to the Ubuntu Software Center, I, I don't have those things as far as I know installed in OpenSUSE. I didn't make a conscious effort to add it. Maybe they were forward thinking and, and added them themselves. I'm not sure. But let's try OpenGL here. I already have OpenGL in Contis. The difference between what's here, if I look for more info, I'm going to ask, you know, what exactly does this give me? Unless I know the dpackage command, which I don't. It's not going to just tell me what's what files are being placed in there. I, to me, that that's a um, you know, it's it's a negative, it's a downside actually of quote unquote simplification. That that you really shouldn't that really should not be disabled. You should have uh, at least a way to look at you know what files are provided during the install, so you have a clue what you need to li link up to. I wouldn't have a clue in OpenSUSE 11.3 if I had an interface like this to work with. Now, anything I could do on... And it doesn't really look like uh, anywhere to tell. I mean, it looks like I have OpenGL installed somewhere. Right? It looks like I've linked OpenGL in there. But that's a different question. Now, now here's something. ATI binary XOR driver. So let me close that. Now, I don't know if that's what I need or not. And hopefully I'm not going to lose everything here. Install. <laughs> Why aren't we installing? What's going on here? I've been rooted. Okay, now it's what's the deal? Is it that I actually have it installed? Probably, right? When I installed mine, it wasn't from the software center, but instead it was from those D packages that I downloaded, right? Um, 3D acceleration games, you know, space simulators. I think I have OpenGL installed. The next thing would be WebGL. Nothing comes up with that. And then the last clue they have was like some P buffs. So I, I'm I'm stumped. Um, as far as I know, I don't know how to get that in there. Uh, what I'm gonna do? I 
wonder if this would snow when no, I'm not going to mess with running a 64-bit library. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go into Ubuntu and I'm going to get that uh, library and I'm going to place it in user library and I'm going to link Firefox 4 to that and we'll see if it works. Okay? Okay.